Hey y'all, this is Darren Van Dam, and today I'm gonna tell you about some of the best sci-fi movies released since 2001 that you have probably missed. The full list of all the movies I discuss in this video can be found in the top pinned comment down below, along with where you can watch them in your respective country. But my bottom pick on this list of 13 movies is Predestination, starring Ethan Hawke. This was directed by the Spirig Brothers, who also did Daybreakers, a really great vampire movie with Ethan Hawke. This one involves time travel, but it's very different from any other time travel movie I've ever seen. There are some themes that cross over to some other time travel movies, but for the most part, the way it's utilized in Predestination is vastly different from anything I've seen. With one exception, there is a movie further up towards the number one spot that has a lot more in common with Predestination and I think is done a little bit better. But in terms of quality on this list, there's not much separating my bottom pick and my top pick. This is a list of bangers, and Predestination has some twists and turns you will never see coming. Plus, it's some good directors, great actor in Ethan Hawke, and a pretty good supporting cast as well. Now my next pick is far and away the most sad movie on this list, and one of the most sad and depressing movies I've ever seen, but it is beautifully done and has some incredible sci-fi imagery in The Fountain. All flesh decays, death turns all to ash, and thus death frees every soul. Now this is directed by Darren Aronofsky, whose latest film, The Whale, is currently in theaters, but he's most known for movies like Requiem for a Dream and Black Swan, and The Fountain fits in with those types of movies pretty damn well. Hugh Jackman and Rachel Weisz are both incredible in this movie. It does have some really depressing elements, but it is beautifully shot, and it takes place in three different time periods or head spaces, it's kind of hard to tell, but each one of them, again, is filmed beautifully, and one of them creating some incredible science fiction visuals that are just absolutely stunning. They're like worth the price of admission. But then on top of that, you get this really interesting movie directed by Darren Aronofsky that you're probably not gonna quite wrap your head around when the credits roll. Now my next pick is the type of indie film I really love to recommend on this channel. It's solid stuff, it's a great sci-fi movie that's incredibly well done with a great cast, but it flew in way under the radar. Midnight Special stars Michael Shannon, Joel Edgerton, Kirsten Dunst, Adam Driver, and has an incredible supporting cast as well. And this is actually directed by Jeff Nichols, who also did Mud with Matthew McConaughey, another one of my favorite movies to recommend on this channel. Midnight Special does reach quite a bit, and I think it does get there. It's just not quite as solid as some of Jeff Nichols' other work, but still an incredible little sci-fi film with a PG-13 rating that punches way above its weight. Now my next pick is not only a comedy, because I do think there are some great science fiction comedies that come out every now and then, but it's also kind of a romantic comedy in a very non-traditional sense, in safety not guaranteed. You ever face certain death? If it was so certain, I wouldn't be here, would I? This was actually directed by Colin Trevorrow before he began directing the new Jurassic World series. It stars Mark Duplass and Aubrey Plaza, but you also get a really great role from Jake Johnson. Aubrey Plaza plays a journalist, kind of a tabloid journalist, who finds this interesting ad asking for someone to travel into the future. And she decides to investigate this really bizarre character played by Mark Duplass. And not only is the setup for this really interesting and it's really well directed and has some funny actors in it, it's also kind of a sweet movie that's tied together pretty well. If you tend to like sweeter little indie movies with interesting twists and turns, Safety Not Guaranteed is an incredible one. If you go into this one expecting a wild sci-fi romp, you're probably gonna be a little bit underwhelmed by the science fiction elements, but it's still such a solid flick, I wanted to include it here on this list. But I had to include another comedy in this list because it is far and away the best science fiction comedy to have come out this century so far, and it's also kind of disturbingly relevant today. I'm talking about Idiocracy. If you have one bucket that holds two gallons, and another bucket that holds five gallons, how many buckets do you have two? Now for the uninitiated, this is an incredibly funny movie created and directed by Mike Judge, who's most famous for movies like Office Space, he also created Beavis and Butthead, and King of the Hill. So if you're a fan of his brand of comedy, 
Idiocracy is one of the funniest things he's ever created. Luke Wilson plays a soldier who's put into a hyperbaric chamber and when he wakes up years, if not decades later, the world has become a vastly different place, populated exclusively by complete morons. And even though he was maybe below average when they froze him, he is now far and away the smartest man on earth and it is an incredible setup and an even better delivery. If you like silly humor and you've never seen this gym, it is probably one of the greatest movies on this list. You should make it one of the first things you watch and it bounces around on different streaming services all the time. Okay, my next pick on this list is one of the more obscure movies on a list of obscure movies. It's titled Turbo Kid. This too bounces around on different streaming services every few months or so, but it is an incredible sort of 80s throwback movie with tons of blood and guts. Now, just by the initial look, it actually looks kind of like an after-school special or something. It's got this really interesting 80s synthwave soundtrack that's a little bit silly, a little bit tongue-in-cheek, and the movie is that too. It's fun, but then it decides to be this bloodbath of a movie as well, with these really wacky weapons, and it's incredibly well-directed. This definitely feels like the type of thing, if you stumbled across this in the 90s while you're channel surfing, it would have been one of the greatest things you've ever come across. Now, it's hiding out on different streaming services. Again, go to that top pinned comment down below, and I've painstakingly listed out where you can stream them in a handful of countries that I know watch my channel. All right, my next pick is one of the bigger ones on this list, but still, I think, highly underappreciated, which is why it makes this list, Dread. Freeze! Why? Now this is a reboot or essentially just a brand new entry into the Dread series. It's not really connected to the Sylvester Stallone movie. Now in this case, I'm not particularly fond of this director's work, but the screenplay for Dread was actually written by Alex Garland, who has written some of the most incredible sci-fi movies released this century, including another one further towards the number one spot on this particular list. But he also did Ex Machina, which he actually directed. Same for Annihilation, and then he's probably most famous for writing the screenplay for 28 Days Later. So a heavy hitter of a science fiction writer, and he did a killer job with the Dread script. This was a movie nobody saw coming back when it came out. No one expected this to be that good. Even fans of Dread were not really expecting this to be a killer flick. And you don't need to know anything about the history of this franchise to thoroughly enjoy Dread. They set everything up that you need to know for this story in the beginning. And again, it's all done pretty flawlessly by an incredible director. And I'll also give credit to Carl Urban for playing Dread. He never felt the need to take his mask off. He plays the character straight down the middle and really does kill it in this movie. Okay, before my next pick, I do want you to keep in mind, this is a list of some of the absolute best science fiction movies released in the past 22 years. And my next pick was created for a shockingly low amount of only $7,000. 7,000, not 70,000, not 700,000. $7,000 is what it took to create Primer. You're talking about making a bigger one. You're talking about making a bigger one. Now, even though Predestination had a much bigger budget and did a great job with the time travel genre, Primer takes things to an incredible level. In fact, this movie gets so twisted, it is on a Christopher Nolan level. Some of you might even think it's more intellectual than most Christopher Nolan movies. So much so that it is incredibly hard to follow, but I'm telling you, this is a solid movie that you can follow if you're paying attention closely. So much so, you could retroactively look up how the time travel works. People have made grids and things for this movie because it has turned into a cult classic. Now, this is one that does hop around on different streaming services, but I do find that it disappears at times for long periods of time. So if you love sci-fi movies, if you get a chance to see Primer, do not pass it up. But with that, we're gonna move on to one of my personal favorites on this list and really one of my just top science fiction movies of all time. It too was written by Alex Garland, but was directed by Danny Boyle, one of my favorite directors of all time, a director responsible for classics like Train Spotting and 28 Days Later. I'm talking about Danny Boyle's Sunshine. This too has a killer cast with Killian Murphy, Rose Byrne, Chris Evans, Michelle Yeoh, and more. 
all on a spaceship on a journey to the sun to set off a nuclear payload to reignite the sun because it is dying in this story. That's the only setup you need, and what you need to know about Sunshine is not only does it have some incredible visuals, I mean like Stanley Kubrick level visuals in this movie, it's also very thoughtfully directed and really maybe could have earned the number one spot on this list if I was going off solely on how underrated the movie is. This one was just vastly overlooked and still holds up today as one of the greatest sci-fi movies of the 21st century. Okay, my next pick is easily one of the most interesting time travel movies I have ever seen. It does come from Spain. Odds are you'll have to read subtitles depending on what streaming service you find it on. They may not have a dubbed version. But I'll say Time Crimes was also one of the top picks on my very first movie list here on this channel. In this movie, a man sees something suspicious in the bushes. I'll go ahead and spoil it. It's a half-naked woman. And when he naturally goes to investigate, he ends up getting sucked into this wild time travel plot of which I will give nothing else away. But it gets dark, twisted, it doubles back on itself, and unlike Primer, it's a lot easier to follow because the plot itself becomes so complicated, the time travel mechanics are kept fairly simple and easy to follow. I loved it for that. And it just escalates in this beautiful way that you're not gonna see coming, even with me telling you that you're not gonna see it coming. This thing escalates in a way that just blew me away. I've watched it several times since, and I'm really surprised by this movie every time that I see it. But my next pick on this list is for the art film crowd, and odds are most of you have seen it. But for the handful of people watching that love incredibly bizarre sci-fi movies that somehow did not catch under the skin, I'm gonna give you a brief description. This is directed by Jonathan Glazer, who is one of my favorite directors who's only done a few movies, my favorite of his being Sexy Beast. But Under the Skin is also a very Stanley Kubrick style sci-fi movie. Scarlett Johansson actually plays an alien who is consuming men. But what's so interesting about the filmmaking process here is they actually put Scarlett Johansson in this van. She drove around and literally picked up guys. Some of the guys that get into this van are real people off the street. They make it into the final movie. And they also signed waivers so they could progress and be in other scenes in the movie. Not only is that filmmaking process interesting, it creates this eerily realistic vibe, and then you get incredible cinematography with this movie. This is not a big, over-the-top, wild movie with this big climax or anything. Again, this is for the art film crowd, but if that sounds like you, Under the Skin is disturbing, but also just incredibly beautiful. Okay, my number two pick on this movie features probably my favorite actor of all time, Sam Rockwell as the sole inhabitant of the moon in Moon. Lunar Industries remains the number one provider of clean energy worldwide due to the hard work of people like you. Now this was written and directed by Duncan Jones, who is the son of David Bowie. He would go on to do Source Code and some other movies that were kind of meh, but Moon is far and away his best work so far. In the first half of the movie, you're really just following Sam Rockwell as he goes about his business as this caretaker for a moon base. And because it's Sam Rockwell, he keeps it fresh and interesting the whole way through. It is interesting to watch him do his work on this moon base, but the plot thickens about halfway through and it gets real thick real fast. There's actually a lot of twists and turns in this and kind of an incredible message and idea at the core of Moon. On top of it being just a really solid flick that I know a lot of people love, if you've missed it, definitely try to get your hands on a copy soon. And then believe it or not, my number one pick is one of the more recent movies on this list. It's also one of the most over-the-top, action-packed sci-fi movies on this list, Upgrade. Son, if I were to hit you, you'd wake up in the past. <laughs> yeah, Cirque said something similar right before I damn near cut his head off. Now this was written and directed by Lee Winnell, who's most famous for creating the Saw series, or at least the beginning of the Saw series. So if you're a fan of that, you have to watch Upgrade. But even if you didn't like Saw, while Upgrade does have some horror elements and a little bit of gore, it really is a thoughtful science fiction movie that just has some hyper-violence at times, but not enough to really turn most people off. 
The basic setup here, though, is that a man played by Logan Marshall Green, who does a killer job in this movie, I think he's a highly underrated actor, he's paralyzed in a car accident, and then is given an opportunity to be implanted with this chip that will allow him to walk, but the chip has a mind of its own and is able to control his body. This makes for some clever sequences that are incredibly fun to watch. I mentioned how good Logan Marshall Green is in this movie. Keep in mind, he has to basically do two performances at once several times in this movie. He has to be fighting people with this body that's basically out of his control, and then his face has to be reacting to the carnage that his body is creating. It's a wild scenario that I've never seen in a movie before, and it earns big points for me for that, but it's also just a solid flick with some solid storytelling elements and incredible production design. Really, a fantastic movie watching experience. If you missed it, try to check it out, but that is the list. I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them, but thanks for checking out this special sci-fi episode, and you will see me on the next one.